Pedestrian was hit and killed on Interstate 40 overnight. News Channel 5's Adam Gassimi is out on the scene along I-40, causing a lot of problems for people trying to get to the airport. But the big question here is, Adam, is what was a pedestrian doing out there? There's not really any place for him or her to be going. There really isn't, Jennifer, and that remains a mystery for us this morning. I want to kind of set the scene where we are now just in the last few seconds police were uh, here behind me on this stretch of I-40 eastbound this is just before the off-ramp to go to Nashville International Airport they have cleared the scene we are expecting them to reopen at least one maybe all of the lanes here in just a few seconds but as you can see there's really nowhere uh, along here where any pedestrian should be there's nothing uh, no sidewalk no uh, nothing, so there's no reason why someone should be out here. You can see the final squad car here leaving uh, to head back the wrong way on the interstate, assuming they're about to reopen. Uh, I, I see coming down this way, they've got uh, a truck coming to apparently clean up some of the last of uh, the damage. So obviously no one is supposed to be out here walking. Apparently someone was, got hit by one car, possibly two or three. They are still investigating, but they have no idea why that person was out here. You can see TDOT showing up here now, trying to make sure everything is clean and ready to be reopened. Traffic is backed up quite a ways, and it has been for the last few hours. Uh, if you're heading east, trying to get to Knoxville, trying to go this direction, even trying to get to the airport, you're going to want to take an alternate. Hopefully, we're told by 8 a.m. this should be opened up. But again, things look like they're wrapping up here, but it is still shut down at this hour. And Jennifer, we'll send it back to you. All right, Adam, thanks. Uh, keep us posted. We also have some other news out of Washington. Former Washington, D.C. Mayor Marion Barry has died. His four terms in office were overshadowed by his arrest back in 1990 after he was caught on video smoking crack cocaine. Spokeswoman says he died shortly after midnight at a Washington hospital. Barry maintained strong support despite his legal problems, particularly from lower income, primarily black sections of that city. He staged a political comeback in 2004 and returned to the D.C. Council. He was then re-elected in 2008 and again in 2012. Many referred to him as D.C.'s mayor for life. Marion Barry was 78. A family lost everything in a big house fire overnight. It happened around 930 in Westmead near the Highway 7100 split. Several people were inside at the time, but they were all able to get out okay. Fire officials believe the fire started somewhere in the basement. But they say because the house had been converted into three or four apartments, the flames got trapped in crawl spaces between the basement and first floor, making it hard for them to fight. The house was destroyed. We have some new information about a missing mother in Lawrence County. Susan Sandusky Martin was found dead in her car yesterday morning in a wooded area. Martin was last seen Thursday and reported missing after she failed to show up to pick up her child from school. Family members say it appears she suffered a medical problem while she was driving. Her car was found in Leoma in Lawrence County near the Alabama state line. Officials say this looks like it was just a tragic accident and they do not suspect foul play. A high-ranking Metro firefighter has been suspended for misusing sick leave. Nashville Assistant Fire Chief Manuel Fonseca received a 10-day suspension. The Nashville Firefighters Union says Fonseca asked for time off last month to attend a firefighter's course in Alabama, but the chief denied the request. Later, Fonseca called in sick and even provided a doctor's note, but it turns out Fonseca did attend the course in Alabama at the time. He has been with the Nashville Fire Department for 29 years. An alleged drunk driver is behind bars in Bowling Green charged with murder. 20-year-old Michael Hardy is being held at the Warren County, Kentucky Jail, accused of murder and DUI first offense. Bowling Green police say around 9 o'clock Friday night they responded to a two-car accident at the intersection of Small House Road and Lois Lane. The other driver was killed in the wreck. No one else was hurt. A special ceremony was held at the Nashville Zoo yesterday to honor 20 people whose remains were discovered on the zoo's property. The cemetery was found at the zoo back in 1989, but it remained untouched until this year when the zoo needed to make room for growth. DNA testing shows the individuals may have been African-American slaves who worked on the old Grassmere farm. The cemetery was moved so the zoo can build a new expanded entrance at the front of the property. Today, Nelson's Greenbrier Distillery is opening for the first time in more than a century. Prohibition forced Charles Nelson to close his popular distillery 105 years ago. Now Andy and Charlie Nelson, brothers and descendants of Nelson, will reopen the doors in downtown Nashville.
The public launch will offer tastings of three spirits created from the original family recipes. There are also tours for $5 with a percentage of the proceeds going to the Greenbrier Historical Society. Things get started at 2 this afternoon at 1414 Clinton Street there at Marathon Village. Well, with Black Friday and Cyber Monday right around the corner, how would you like some extra cash for Christmas? Be sure to tune into News Channel 5 tomorrow at 4. All you have to do is be the fifth caller when you see the cue to call, and you will win a $500 Visa gift card.